Disclaimer, Jackbet's content is not meant to replace the actual viewing experience of watching RuPaul's Drag Race. The videos discuss the content of the show, but they don't nearly make as much sense without the context of watching the episode. You can watch season 15 of Drag Race on MTV or WoW Presents Plus if you're outside the US. Hey guys, it's Jack. We've made it to the final 40 minute episode, and honestly, it was a really good one to go out on. It's been a while since they brought someone in to interview for a challenge, and I think it's really fun every time they do it. And that's still very true here. I really like the way that they split of the groups because I feel like each person can do something different without it becoming too repetitive. And also, I like how each group had a different person to interview, while unlike season 6, there were two people for every single queen. That to me just gets a little redundant because it feels like everyone's asking similar questions, but on season 15, because there were multiple celebrities and they were working together in groups, they could plan out their questions so not the same question is getting asked. I think there could have been a big imbalance with the segments, with one of the segments being a lot more funny or one of the segments being a lot better to interview. I know some people weren't the biggest fan of this challenge, but everything here just worked for me. Before we break down each of the queen's performances, let's talk about what was set up. So last week, I talked about how Lucy's storyline was slowly starting to shift into a really delusional one, and I alluded to the first five minutes of this episode being a major role in that. Lucy will call Mistress the bitch, but I see Mistress more as like a troll, someone with humor that I really understand. Mistress is going to poke someone until she gets a reaction out of them, but to her, it's all in good fun. Doing things like pretending to be scared when Lucy stands up. Or when Lucy's signaling her to be mad at Marsha, she then blows her a kiss. That's exactly my type of humor. It translates super well subtly to TV. But someone like Lucy, who's really frustrated in a competition, it is really, really annoying. So moving on to the debate of the week, do mini challenges count? I... no, they don't. They really don't. I think they do count more so than ever because there's so much cash behind them now, and we really don't get these mini challenges as often as we used to. I get Lucy's reasoning because she is winning these mini challenges, they're coming less in the season, and they are iconic challenges, but they don't have the same weight behind winning real challenges. I think Lucy does deserve respect in the competition, she won Snatch Game, she's been pretty consistent since her bad first episode and up to the ball, but I think where she starts to lose her sisters and a lot of other people is when she's begging for that respect. And here, they know exactly what they're doing by putting her into the top and not giving her that win. Out of the top three, I definitely do think that the win should have gone to either Sasha or Lux. Putting her high, having Lux called safe first, and then giving the win to Sasha, that I feel like they wanted a face crack, and that's kind of what they got. But something that I do want to point out is that though she did face crack at the end, and she was talking about it in the beginning, in the whole middle of the episode, it wasn't really a conversation. That segment could have been cut for time, but by them omitting it, I feel a little more confident in Lucy's run going forward. I love a queen that keeps me guessing on whether they're going to burn out in glorious fashion, or come to the top and win a challenge. And Lucy is giving me exactly that. I could definitely see her winning next week or completely flopping, but I feel like a win is more on the way because it is a stand-up challenge. As for other storylines, I'm honestly surprised to see Malaysia go out this soon. To be honest, I saw her winning a challenge and then going out right before the finale, but I guess that just wasn't in the cards this time. At the same time, I did kind of predict this last week saying that Malaysia's edit was starting to slow down, but I felt pretty confident that it was going to pick back up again. I guess they saw the feud with Mistress not really going anywhere with Mistress kind of interacting with other people like Lucy instead. So in the grand scheme, I guess they didn't really see her in their endgame. Lux finally got some good background, but it was in Untucked. I really, really wish that it was in the actual episode. But we're finally starting to see some of the other side of her, and she did really good this week, so I feel like her momentum is really building. Anitra didn't really get that much, but I still think she's in a really good place in the competition. Marsha is... oh, I... how do I talk about Marsha? The fact that they set her up this episode by her not really understanding Charo and then not really going anywhere with that when she was called safe, it kind of tells me that either she actually did good in that interview or they just don't really have anything to do with her. The constant makeup critiques, the often safe placements, it really isn't cracking her that much. And that's helping her do good in the competition, but I feel like that's just not really setting her up for endgame. She really isn't budging for what they throw at her, she's taking the makeup critiques and I think that's really good, but by her not giving any movement, she's not a workable piece for any storylines. And I feel really bad because I do like Marsha, but even last Last week, I forgot to talk about her because she didn't really have anything going on. She gets a good confessional or one-liner in there every once in a while, but the only time we're reminded of her storyline is when she's on the main stage getting critiqued for her makeup. As for Mistress, she arguably deserved the bottom spot for this week with Malaysia, but I don't think they went with her because she was in a gown while Malaysia was in a full-on performance outfit, and also Selena had that tear away. Malaysia has revealed some things that allegedly took place on the Roscoe's interview. I don't really want to get into that. You guys can go watch that for yourself. Roscoe's is kind of weird about clips. I think if Mistress was in a performance outfit, there's no doubt in my mind that she would have been in the bottom, and they would have
tried to finish off that storyline with Mistress and Malaysia, but I feel like if they didn't lip sync in the Lala Perusa, that storyline is just so far gone that it doesn't really matter at this point. And finally, let's talk about the conspiracy of Sasha Colby taking over RuPaul's Drag Race. Everyone loves Sasha. I love Sasha, and I feel like that's the most frustrating part. Right off the bat, do I think that she's going to take over at the season 15 finale when she's crowned? Uh, that's too many factors, and also I don't think so. They are constantly hyping her up, and I think that's what's ringing a bunch of alarm bells in people's heads, and I think that she could easily be a great replacement for RuPaul. I just think that's writing off a ton of other queens who could also be a really great replacement for RuPaul. I've done a whole video on it over a year ago, and even with that, I left out people like Raven and Jinx who could also take over. So Sasha is easily a contender, and by RuPaul asking her if she's ever hosted in this episode, people were freaking out. But let's slow down just a little bit. It definitely could happen, and I would be so happy about it. But again, there's just too many factors to really know at this point. So let's start off with Sasha as we move on to the challenge. I do think that Sasha overall was the best. I think Lux did a really good job too, but the way that Sasha handled the interview, it was just really warm and welcoming. Like I was saying earlier, Marsha's segment felt like it was cut down to only where she was really not understanding Charo, up until the end where we got some really good moments with the two. Selena struggled, but I do understand where she was coming from with cutting off Love Connie. I mean, they were on a time limit and it seemed like Connie was going on a lot of tangents. When you're in that competition setting, you have these questions drafted, you really want to get to them or else you're going to get critiqued for that, but then you cut her off and then, oh, you're getting critiqued for that instead. Like Sasha was saying in the confessional, it felt like Mistress couldn't really read Connie and she just didn't really have a control over the interview. Connie was throwing a lot of things out and from what was showcased, it really didn't seem like Mistress had a lot of reaction to it. Out of the three, Lux was able to stay on top of it the most. It was a lot of yes and on Lux's end and I think that's what Connie wanted. The issue with me is the fact that I don't think that Connie was being the best interviewee, if that makes sense. She has a magnetic personality and I can listen to her talk for hours and I don't know if it was like this in real life but the way that it was edited with Mistress it felt like she was just completely ignoring Mistress's questions. Mistress could have been more in the moment responding to the jokes that Connie was making but at the same time I feel like you should meet her halfway and at least answer some of the questions. That's just all what I picked up from the edit. Lucy did a really great job. I think she was really born for the hosting and the interviewing and I feel like that's why she's gonna do good next week too. Anitra was good. I don't really have a lot to say about her. As for Malaysia again back to that Roscoe's interview she said that some of the questions that she had she had to throw them out the window because she couldn't really ask them so that's why she was silent for a lot of it and why it ended up falling flat. Overall I don't think that any of the queens really did that bad and even if some parts of the Connie segment were a little distracting to me all three guests were really great to have on. Unlike the past with guests who don't really know what's going on Frankie, Charo, and Connie all have a really good idea of what Drag Race is and what they need to do. When they have guests who watch the show regularly it helps to avoid the awkward moments that you can get with the queens. Moving on to the runway and the lip sync I don't really talk about the runways that much but I do just want to talk about them here because a lot of people had a lot of things to say. So for those who don't know why no one chose to do music video looks for Beyonce, like I very iconic looks, it's because they can only reference their outfits off of Getty images. And Getty images can be found at performances or carpets and that's unfortunately just what they had to deal with. It's all just very interesting to me because like in the past they didn't really have to deal with this with Madonna and Candy was able to do a reference to hold up on season 13 but it's like I guess because it's a thousand nights that's where like the legality comes in? I really don't know. I want to know your thoughts on this in the comments below. If they're restricted to only a certain criteria of looks, should they even do the Thousand Nights in the first place? Personally, I don't think so. I love the recreations. I love looking at the side-by-sides, but you can get that other places without having to like get the whole legal issue in there. One of my favorite runways that involves recreation in a side-by-side -side is my first time in drag, which was seen on Canada season one. It's a really cool concept, and I hope that they bring it to US at some point. The lip sync was fine. People hated it. I understand why they weren't the biggest fan, but to me, I don't really need to be up in arms about it. The stand-up next week is one of my favorite challenges, and I can honestly see anyone in the competition doing really well at this. The 60 slash 90 minute episodes are back, and I am so, so excited. I'm going to have a Q&A video coming out soon, and some other videos aside from season 15 coming out soon, I promise. I've still been pretty drained, but there's moments of clarity in there where I really, really want to make these videos. And at the end of the day, it's really what I want to do. Thank you guys for all the sweet comments. It really, really means a lot. And with that being said, I'll see you soon with another video.